Hi, and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. Today's guest is known for pushing the limits of physical fitness. Olivia Young is a culinary trained, former hospitality brand director and wellness entrepreneur. And she is also the founder of Box and Flow, a boxing and yoga fusion studio that is the first of its kind. Her classes teach you to dig deeper and search inward to find your fight and flow. Welcome to the show, Olivia. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming to my studio. This is by far the most beautiful fitness studio I have ever seen. <laughs> Total labor of love. And I can tell because you can see how much thought was put into every detail. I mean, I, I walked in here and I said to myself, I feel like I'm in a music video. Oh like gosh. it makes me want to work out. You feel the energy the moment you enter this space. Could you tell me a little bit about your story and how we ended up here? So I started Box and Flow in November 2016 um, with a uh, passion and absolutely no idea what I was doing. I had <laughs> like never, entrepreneur. literally, but even to like the nth degree, I had never taught a class before. I uh, had been practicing yoga since I was 15 and started boxing when I was 20. And I found that the duality of energies that both of those modalities gave me, mm -hmm. you know, really um, created balance within. So boxing gave me strength and confidence and yoga forced me to slow down and really feel. And I think that those skill sets combined created um, this, this ability to be my best self every day. You embody the spirit of uh, fight and flow. You have a really relaxed, laid back side, but you also have a very driven entrepreneurial side. And how do those things come together and make you decide, I'm gonna start this type of boxing yoga studio? I knew I needed to create something. I didn't know what it was. I never thought about starting a fitness business or even teaching a class, even though I had done my yoga teacher training and I had, again, embodied this like fitness alter ego. But So why do the yoga uh, teacher training if you weren't sure you wanted to teach a class? There was something in me that was searching for a depth of meaning. It's like you are you knew inside, but you couldn't put words to it. Totally. Like and you're you, on yeah. this path. Like you said, uh, I believe that entrepreneurs are born. And it was almost like you were already on that path and, and you didn't really see where it was gonna go, but clearly we've ended up here in your amazing studio. Yes, and then with that said though, I fought myself to open it and start this concept because you know, it, it, it didn't make sense to anybody really but me <laughs> because it hadn't existed before and, right. and I, didn't have the background of being a fitness, you know, influencer. I didn't have a following. I'd never taught a class. But when you ask, you know, what, you know, made you do this, I was feeling some sort of way every day. And the way that I was feeling was empowered, mm -hmm. but grounded. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as humans, you know, we, we live in such extremes. But to really find that inner focus, you have to feel your fire, but also like understand and embrace your calm. Mm -hmm. Both sides of a coin. Tell me about the process of starting the business. Now, anyone that started a business, anyone that is looking to start a business knows there's a lot involved with that. It's not just the idea. Mm -mm. Uh, funding is a big part of that. Yes. So you taught your first class. Clearly that impacted you to want to start the actual classes you do now. You didn't start in this location. No. So what was the process of getting that first location um, and actually getting people to go to it. April 2016, I was ready. I quit my job. I opened a bank account. June 2016, it made, so two months later, yeah. I taught my first class. Okay. I was scared. Ah, yeah. all the things. And this was your first class not in your own studio? Ever, and the only class I taught before I opened the space. <laughs> To like my brother and my like my I don't know friend, two friends. But some, but I think a lot of your journey is like you were born to. This is the path you were born to do, and it's clear that it worked. So tell me, mm -hmm. you opened your first gym. Yes. How'd you get the funding for that? You quit your job, so you. I'm assuming you saved some money from so, that. So again, like I, you know, I feel like I was born an entrepreneur. I come from an entrepreneurial family. Okay. As I was brand director of this hospitality company, mm -hmm. I was bored as 
you know, typical Most entrepreneur. entrepreneurs are. Right. Um, and I ran a consultancy as a side hustle. Okay. And I was representing other chefs and other food brands. Okay. Without knowing it, I was literally growing a nest egg to fund my own business. Nice. I funded my own business, my first space that does not, did not look like this. <laughs> More of a dungeon. It's a, a you know, <laughs> it's a stepping stone. You, totally. You, you start, started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. Drake said it. <laughs> and he was right. And with that, yeah. it was such a rite of passage because it was the greatest commitment I ever made was signing a lease, painting the walls, like hanging bags up and saying I am here. And it was and it was a feeling. You felt the grit in the walls. You mm -hmm. felt the love, blood, sweat, tears. All of it was real. Um, and it was it was something that it's hard to even put into words, but it changed my life and it changed lives. And yeah. that was the goal of it. And it was also the space that I ran to at 5 a.m. when the heat didn't work or there was a snowstorm. Wow. And I had to, you know, figure it out and shovel the stoop before people came. And and people loved it for that. And it was also ironic that the time that I opened was the same that major competitors opened right. with millions and millions of dollars of funding. My wow. business, my studio cost less than $150,000 to open. Wow. That's um, incredible. Which is like true bootstrap, yeah. yeah, startup, yeah, yeah. rickety bathroom door, all the complaints. And it wasn't about the facade of it. It was about the feeling of yeah. it. Yeah. So how did you attract your first customers? Oof. I had a friend set out a press, re press release. I couldn't, you know, I didn't have a budget for PR. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't understand why people were showing up for me. And I, I called my mom, I was like, I don't, you know, they want to give me this, they, they, they're calling, like people are coming. And she goes, Olivia, you have been showing up for people for the last seven, 10 years of your life, just giving, now it's your time to receive. Wow. And I don't know why that was something that I never thought of and I'll never forget because it was like, holy shit. Like right. it's my time to receive. And I think again, that's one of life's greatest lessons is to not just receive, but to be open to receive, yeah. be it like love or support or a compliment. You know, we're so quick to shy away from, oh, you look beautiful. Oh, no, mm -hmm. no. Ugh, I, 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 it's true. And as women, I think we're taught to kind of push away those compliments. Or those gifts or as, yeah. you know, in, in like the thought process that like that something is, is wanted in return. Yeah. But actually, if you can just see yourself as like holy enough to receive. Yeah. Knowing and to be worth. worthy. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, again, that comes back to the concept at hand, like face yourself to free yourself. You're facing yourself on a bag and it's like the doubt, the fear, the insecurity, the guilt, the shame, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come up when you put your gloves on and you're like in it, right? right? The music's blasting, the lights are low. You're not seeing yourself, you're not judging yourself, your outfit, your body. You're in your process if you allow yourself to be present. It's beautiful. Outside of the distraction. Yeah. So so the world opens up to me and I I received and I was able to open the first studio. People came, they came back. Was it challenging? Yes. Yeah. And it Were never, you the only person that was working at that time? It was me and then I hired a desk manager who was also one of my instructors. I was very clear okay. that I needed to get and train a staff because I didn't want to be the only teacher Yeah. because then the whole business would ride on me Right. and I wanted to I wanted it, I want it to be able to grow beyond me because right. my dream and purpose in this business, in these four walls, is to be able to lead, to coach, to speak, to guide outside of a black leotard in a boxing mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And I want this to be able to replicate in every city, in small towns, where people can practice this idea of flow through the fight, face themselves, and I can't be in all of those places. Yeah, because no, it's this true. is it's the only way to make it scalable. Yeah, and and this is something that is for everybody, every size, every shape, every color. I wanted to make the price point approachable mm -hmm. in a way that was almost a detriment in some ways to my business in this hyper competitive, expensive market that is boutique fitness in New York City. So how do you keep track of all of that? Finance is, is one of the main things that makes sure that you can run the business long totally. term. Um, a lot of people aren't great at finance. If you are, congratulations, I am not. I, ha I had to hire someone to run that for me. Um, so what do you do to keep track of it? I mean, I think the way that businesses thrive, especially first as an entrepreneur, you have to really know your strengths, but 
own your weaknesses. Yeah. Because you're not good at everything, even though you can pull it off because you have grit. If you're right. an entrepreneur, you can figure things out. You can't figure finance out. I mean, high level finance, you I mean, can't. I can't figure finance Me. out. <laughs> so really learning to delegate is like, I think the best skill you can acquire. Yeah. At first you want to covet everything because it's yours. And you don't want anyone to ruin it. That's no. the thing, like giving away the control can totally. be very scary. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience growing? Really recognizing what you can versus yeah. what you can't. Yeah. And I think if you want a semblance of a normal life, as an entrepreneur, you, you will not have a normal life. Yes. And this becomes your life in many ways. And you have to you know, embrace that. I know what I'm good at. And I know even more what I'm not. And it was finding people and tools to you know, fill the gaps, mm -hmm. fill the holes, to make me feel whole. Through talking to you, it's very clear that you have a lot of passion behind every single decision you make. I mean, you just look around your space, everything's extremely well thought out. Uh, you share a lot of stories with your customers and you have a blog called Live Young, yes. which you share recipes and personal stories and all types of um, just more personal content than you would with Box and Flow. Why start a blog? That can be a lot of work and you're already doing all of this. The blog to me is the actual embodiment of everything I teach. It's the mindset behind all of these mantras. It's the why. Mm -hmm. Because to me, it's well, well beyond the way that we move. It's the way that we fuel ourselves. It's the way that we speak to ourselves. It's the way that we connect with ourselves and with others. So you opened your lo first location in 2016 and you opened this location in 2020. Yes. Now this location is much larger. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. I didn't see your, your last location, but just based on the description you gave, I, <laughs> I think Very this was raw. a serious upgrade. Totally. Um, this required a lot more funding, I'm assuming. How do you fund something like that? I took on a financial partner who was somebody I had worked with in the past um, as my old boss who came to me. He said, I have this space. He had followed my journey. He was always a mentor and it was like a dream that somebody came to me and was like, That's what, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and so here we are. I opened this space three weeks before shutdown. So barely touched and you know, when COVID hit, I transitioned everything online. Yeah, tell me about that transition because you've been doing some really great things. Um, as someone who owns a tour company in New York, I've had to switch to live YouTube tours. Mm. Um, you've been doing on-demand classes right. and live classes, I believe. Yes, both. Um, similar to what everybody else has had to do. Mm -hmm. You have, you, I mean, or not have to, make a choice to create some sort of continued connection with um, your community through all of this chaos. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been easy, but to be honest, it hasn't been that hard to so just transition online. Is it ideal? No. Is it the same you know, revenue I would be making with two studios, one studio? No, but um, it's keeping a flame alive that could easily dim and then die. Yeah. And you have to, this is survival mode for all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is a survival tactic. On your site it says on demand. Does that mean they're all pre-recorded and you can buy like a pack? So there's like a live membership, which is classes every day with multiple different teachers. And then there's on demand as a supplement that you could on demand watch a pre-recorded class. Okay. So both. Give as many options to your students as you can during this hard time. So they have the on-demand option now. They also have the live classes. Um, how do you market both of these? Previously, your marketing tactics were all for in-person. Has it shifted? Mm -hmm. Social media. Uh, the same with using a third party. They you know, also do heavy marketing, mm -hmm. um, word of mouth teachers that are teaching that also use their own social market, uh, media, the already built-in community that you know, hopefully can be inspired to still keep moving through all of this. Yeah. And just like really keeping hope. You know, I think as cheesy as it sounds, the way that this business started, as I said, a complete labor of love. Mm -hmm. And I think people can feel the authenticity, they can feel the energy and the passion. And they're they open to it if they're open. I've never felt like I want to work out when I enter a gym. But this gym just looks really fun. Just everything about it. I love how you chose the lighting. 
Uh, if you could talk to me about the design here, because this is unlike any other gym someone yeah. walks in. So I know that you have a lot of meaning behind everything you do. So let's start as someone that's walking through the door and walk me through your, your uh, interior design process and how that might impact someone's psychology that is coming here to work out. So, I mean, the front door, you walk in, the front desk, there's a greeting, there's a welcome, and you, you know, you're shuffled straight into this place where, in all actuality, it's like a personal hell. You know, there's <laughs> red lights, there's darkness, there's no distraction. There, before COVID, the, the class was built on two people on one bag, which creates 40 people in the room, mm. because, you know, once you're faced someone else on the other side, there's an accountability factor you might not all, like always hold for yourself. Yeah. And there's parts of the class that go into speed and power rounds and someone's holding the bag and you're going as fast as you can and then as hard as you can. But again, there's somebody on the other side, like, I got you, we got this, we're good, we're here, we're gotcha. here together. Okay. It's energy, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, the purpose of this space, though, is to really shut off anything outside of yourself. Mm. Nobody is watching or comparing you. If they are, it's not about you. Yeah. So it's, it's, again, it's about really seeing yourself without the sight line. Yeah. Seeing yourself, how you feel, um, and what you feel. And then really letting it go. So the yeah. class really takes you up. Warm up, high intensity intervals, shadow boxing, then boxing, gloves on, nine rounds nonstop. Yeah, we have, we have some of your stuff Yeah, so here. like light weights, those are the hand wraps. Um, and so then after, on the... no, there's actual gloves. Those okay. are under the gloves. Gotcha. But clearly I've never done this before. <laughs> after the nine rounds of like nonstop to like super intense music. So uh -huh. everything's beat driven. So hip hop, rock, like Nirvana, DMX. High know. energy music. Exactly. It like little wheezy. And then like there's three parts of the class that I said are the intervals where somebody is holding for you and you're switching back and forth. That's when the lights get really intense. The music gets really loud and you're like in the heat of it. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down, goes up, comes. It, it keeps you engaged. Yeah. And then the music breaks to instrumental. So <laughs> think of like something like. Um, like so a, it's very much about the music too. Yes. Do you have a soundtrack for these classes? Totally. Wow. It's, so Box and Flow, when I started, the, it was inspiration and empowerment through energy, breath, movement, and music. Cool. Nothing about boxing or yoga. So the, the soundtrack, the playlist, is it starts with the warm-up. It goes into shadow box. Then there's an instrumental. Like, think of the... the the game like Halo, like yeah, yeah. almost so you and then it's you're like a journey. It's a exactly. personal journey or like a Star Wars song yeah. and you're like setting your intention. You're finding groundness and stillness. You pop up and then you don't stop moving for nine rounds on the bag. Crazy, intense music. Then gloves come off, wraps come off. You find yourself on your mat. Uh -huh. The music changes again to like this instrumental. Wow. And then you feel your breath. And so the last 15 minutes is a vinyasa flow where you open everything up. So again, it's the juxtaposition of like this, then this, and then you end in stillness, silence, and darkness. Uh, what's the hardest part about starting a business? Getting out of your own way. Yeah. And, in, and understanding and acknowledging and even embracing the fact that uh, it's never gonna be perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect doesn't exist. And being okay with Ex being exactly where you are, knowing what you know, embracing what you don't, and just starting. Yeah, just starting. Just starting. Just starting. This is a theme throughout this show. Just do it. Yeah, like just literally do flow it. through the fight, learn as you go, you know, take on challenge and resistance with ease. Mm -hmm. Do not get stuck. Everything you need is inside. You have the answers, you have the tools, and those that you don't, they're not yours to figure out, outsource. All right, Google it. YouTube, hire someone. Totally, but and then at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing really for me is always trusting your intuition. Mm -hmm. You wanna hire somebody, you wanna fire somebody, you know what is best for you and your business and your well-being. So let's close this interview with a, a piece of advice for aspiring entrepreneurs. In a life filled with so much noise, be your own quiet. It's never going to be as planned. Mm -hmm. But for you to be your best self, you have to understand that um, you're worthy of success 
but you have to find a way to limit the distraction and the noise telling you otherwise. Yeah. Not getting stuck along the way. The amount of times that I wanted to throw my hands up and throw the towel in before I started, <laughs> while I started, and probably well after, you know, I start my next thing. But, you know, ultimately, you're your, your greatest, you know, champion and your harshest critic. So it's been wonderful having you on the show, Olivia. Um, thank you for everyone that joined us and thanks for everyone that tuned in today. If you want to learn more about Box and Flow, visit boxandflow.com or follow them on Instagram at Box and Flow or you can follow Olivia at Live Young. And that is all for this episode of School of Hustle. Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard today, please consider leaving a review, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We will see you next time. Bye.